All right, so let's take a look at the the Alex topic that you were having trouble with. Uh, if you pull the slides from chapter 14, this particular slide is going to be useful for us because it tells us how to predict how changes in concentration will affect the position of the equilibrium uh, for, for a particular reaction. All right, so what this is telling us is that if I increase the concentration of a product, well, where are your products? Well, your products are here. If I increase the concentration of products, well, the equilibrium will then shift to the left to reduce that uh, the stress introduced to the system. If I decrease the concentration of my products, equilibrium will shift to the right. If I increase concentration of reactants, which are here, equilibrium will shift to the right. And if I decrease concentration of reactants, equilibrium will shift to the left. So let's take this slide here, these concept, this concept, and apply it to two examples uh, from Alex. So here we have this reaction, this formation of ammonia from molecular nitrogen and hydrogen gas. And it says that if some nitrogen gas, if some M2, N2 is removed. Well, in this reaction, what is N2? Molecular nitrogen is a reactant. So let's go back here. If I decrease the concentration of reactants, which is this scenario here, how does that affect the position of the equilibrium? Well, equilibrium will shift to the left. So if I go back here, if I remove some NH2 and decrease the concentration of nitrogen in the system, well, equilibrium will shift to the left. Okay, so if this decreases, equilibrium will shift to the left. Well, if equilibrium shifts to the left, then how will that affect the pressure of H2 and the pressure of ammonia? Well, if equilibrium shifts to the left, then what that means is reactants become more favored and the pressure of H2 will go up. The pressure of ammonia will go down because, of course, equilibrium has shifted to the left, and so this reverse reaction becomes more favorable. All right, so uh, some NH3 is added. Well, let's go back. NH3 is our, our product here. If I increase the concentration of product, which is this situation, Equilibrium also shifts to the left. So as I add ammonia, I increase the concentration of ammonia, which is our product. Equilibrium will again shift to the left. If equilibrium shifts to the left, well, the pressure of N2 goes up and the pressure of H2 also goes up. Our next example, uh, we have a different reaction, the formation of sulfur trioxide from sulfur dioxide gas and oxygen gas. Uh, if some SO2 is removed, well, what is SO2? It is a reactant. So I'm decreasing the concentration of reactants. Well, what happens if I decrease the concentration of reactants? Here we are again. Equilibrium shifts to the left. SO2 removed. It is a reactant. If I decrease the concentration of reactant, equilibrium shifts to the left. As equilibrium shifts to the left, well, that means that the pressure of O2 will go up, but the pressure of our product, SO3, will go down. Okay? Some SO3 is added, so that's product. Let's go back here. If I increase the concentration of product, what happens? Equilibri equilibrium shifts to the left as well. So... As the SO3 is added, equilibrium, this is a product, equilibrium will shift to the left again, and because equilibrium shifts to the left, the pressure of SO2, which is a reactant, will go up, and the pressure of O2, which is also a reactant, will go up. All right, hope that helps.